Staying with Jane, Season 2 Local Legends, the show that helps you to thrive, not just survive, every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Tune in each week as Jane connects with local legends of Dorset, bringing you the most up-to-date health and wellness guidance, therapies, courses, retreats, and stories happening locally. Each session includes a guided meditation hosted by Jane or one of her special guests. Here's your host, Jane Scanlon. Hello and welcome to Season 2, Episode 7. And today we are interviewing Lucy Davis. Hello and welcome. Hi, Jane. Thank you so much for inviting me on. I feel extremely privileged to be on a local legends uh, podcast from my beautiful, you know, from my beautiful roots of Dorset. So thank you so much for reaching out. Uh, my absolute pleasure. Um, I have been following you online. We haven't met in person yet, yeah. but I can tell, you know, your energy is massive. You are a true intuitive. Um, you're definitely a woman on a mission and you're, you're here to um, inspire people, aren't you? And to get them out of their heads and into their heart space and help them on that kind of spiritual mission in this lifetime so we're not wasting life we're actually here living it and doing something with it absolutely it's all about the embracing the life like whatever life throws at you you know we need to learn how to ride those cosmic waves as i like to call it you know we've got to grab our surfboards hold on and ride those waves rather than getting like you know caught up so um yeah it's been a bit of a wild journey for, for myself to be honest with you so all i do is i everything that i've learned over the years or every experience that i've gone through i just put it into practical terms for people and then they can obviously um evolve their journey using the stuff that i've been through online you know fantastic and talking about that journey can you tell us a little bit more about you so not the person that's out there right now doing all the stuff but the journey and and how you got to where you are now how long have we got <laughs> it's a bit of a wild one jane it's a little bit of a wild one so um I was and that is why i love these interviews because <laughs> what i find is people in the spiritual world we've come through a journey haven't we absolutely and this is the thing a lot of people get caught up in the moment believing that we were incarnated like this and we weren't we've been through the same challenges the same you know uh lumps and bumps in the road we've had our hearts broken and and you know the version that people see today of me is not the person that you saw or like people knew back then you know and it's really 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 important to recognize that and actually embrace um the person that we are so I was born to a beautiful family, like I've got the most safe mum and dad you could possibly imagine. Um, and I was born in Paul Hospital in Dorset um, on the 2nd of February. And, um, you know, I've got to be honest with you, Jane, like my family life from my perspective was amazing. Don't get me wrong, like things happened, like divorce and other bits and pieces along the way. Yeah. But, you know, I was very, very protected. I was, a, I had an amazing childhood. And... But they're, 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 again, as I say, I, you know, I had an amazing childhood. At eight years of age, my dad actually stopped his car after picking me up from my horse riding and told me that he cheated on my mum. You know, which is a wild thing to learn at eight years of age. And so, of course, I started to get a bit of a story um, in my mind about men. And you know, so that was at eight years of age. At ten years yeah. of age, for those that, that have lived in Bournemouth their whole life or lived in Dorset their whole life, you know, we get to do this beautiful thing called the eleven plus. You know, I was doing my eleven plus exam to go to Bournemouth yeah. Grammar School, and a guy uh, or a boy, obviously at the time, had an epileptic fit. I thought he was dead. So again, it's another bump in the road. Like literally, I thought this man, this this boy, this young boy at the time had died. In the, and in the exam. In the exam. Literally, we've oh. been going about five, ten minutes, and obviously it just got too much for him and he just collapsed. And you oh know how God. epilepsy um appears, like yeah. you know, the the frothing of the mouth and and, and it yeah. was just so scary as a ten year old girl. And it was that moment where I switched my gifts off. I was always a white, like wild, bright button um, yes. of a girl. You know, I loved rounding people up and being excitable. And, you know, I really saw the lust for life as a child. But what happened from that moment, Jane, was I switched it all off. Like life became very serious. 
I became focused on school. I became focused on the kind of things that the schooling system want you to focus on, you know, and they and and like your family, they want you to do well and they want you to get on in life. And I'm not saying any of those things are bad, but I'm just saying I went from this little being of I don't care. I'm just going to be me, and I'm happy to all of a sudden having the weight of the world on my shoulders by two things that can happen to anybody. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, fast forward a few years, uh, my 16th birthday, uh, my beautiful older sister decided to tell me that she was a heroin crack addict. Oh, gosh. Yeah, on my 16th birthday. So, you know, just before then, a few months before then, my parents had split up as well. So it was just compounding lots and lots of different trauma, lots of different situations. And the reason I'm sharing this so openly and vulnerably with, with, with your listeners is, like, I can imagine... Every single person that's listening to this will be like, oh, oh, that happened to me. Something like that happened. Something similar happened to me. Oh, my God, yes, I had all of these challenges too. I had all of these things happen. Mm. And, you know, like, I don't like to say that it's a good thing that these things happen, but they do shape you to being a particular kind of person. And I feel very privileged, dare I say, that I went through these experiences because now with the wisdom that I've got, Obviously, I can help people that are going through similar things, you know. But as a 16-year-old girl, Jane, it was hideous. You know, it was hideous. It was such a lot of pressure, you know. Obviously, I saw my mum actually... And just about to go through all of your exams and everything else. And it it was. You're absolutely bang on. It it happened literally a few months before my, my GCSEs. And, you know, back then, I don't know if they're as important these days, but back then, GCSEs were important, you know, like... I know now A-levels and degrees tend to be a little bit more important, but back then GCSEs were kind of like an, an important thing. And, you know, I was my parents had just split up. My sister was now an addict. Like, and I didn't really even understand addiction. And then in, in the next thing, I put these exams um, on my shoulders. And I'll be honest with you, Jane, I went from being like a young girl to a grown woman overnight. Yes. And anybody out there that has been through any, anything similar, like the baggage that you pick up when you go from being a child, like, and I was a, I was a young child, you know, I was horse crazy. I was, you know, very good at netball. So I was very engrossed in sports at school. And, and, and every weekend it was about, you know, horses and going showing and jumping and all the rest of it. I wasn't one of those young girls that, that were interested in boys. It just wasn't me at all. But, yeah. And my friends, my friends are shocked when I say that because obviously, as I got older, that changed a lot. But yeah. like people, people are shocked when I say that. Like I wasn't interested. I just loved being around animals. I loved being outdoors. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, as the years progressed, I went into serious self sabotage mode myself. I drank alcohol. Yes. I took recreational drugs. I was a very well known girl on the Bournemouth party scene, you know, and. Like people hear this stuff about me and they're like, like, how are you? How was that you? Because a lot of people today can't even believe that was me. And I love it when I run seminars and like people from my past come along and they're like, I remember that girl. Like, and they literally say like, she's not lying. I promise you. Because obviously now the girl that I am today, the woman that I am is a complete polar opposite to that. Mm. You know, so I want, again, I'm saying this, so any of you guys that are out there that are in a bit of a self-sabotage cycle, please don't think that you're off your spiritual journey. Like, you are going to get there. You are going to make it. You are going to get to wherever it is that you need to be, but you've just got to keep on keeping on. You know, it's so important for us to just keep stepping forwards. Then over the years, Jane, in all honesty, I spiraled. I had amazing loving relationships, and then all of a sudden my insecurities kicked in, and you know you know the normal stuff that happens to people so I started yeah. sabotaging it's so it's so common I have a very similar story a very similar story oh, really? and when I speak that yeah when I speak to other um holistic well-being spiritual coaches mentors therapists we, <laughs> we all have that kind of a similar journey um yeah it's so, interesting isn't it yeah, just on that point, because I've got quite, I'd really like to share my opinion on that with you, if, if you don't mind, because maybe it'll resonate with other people. I actually truly believe that we had to get caught up in the stickiness of the cobweb, if you like. You know, we had to be that fly caught up in the cobweb, because without us, you know, like, we weren't meant to fit in here. 
but we wanted to fit in. We desperately tried to fit in. And so we had to kind of like dull ourselves down a little bit by using drugs, smoking cigarettes, by drinking alcohol, by partying, and that whole hedonistic lifestyle. Like I lived a hedonistic lifestyle for a very, very, very long time. Yeah, definitely. You know? And I believe it's to suppress us and to just yeah. hold us back a little bit. And then all of a sudden we end up breaking free from that and we, we turn into the butterflies mm. that we are today, you know? I don't know about you, but I had many moments in that, that that lifestyle where I would, I just knew it wasn't for me. I knew I shouldn't have been there. I know I was, I was the one that would feel guilty um, yeah. whilst doing all the yeah. things and afterwards and everybody else would be like, oh, Jane, like, get on with it. Have fun. We're having fun. Don't worry about it. I'd be doing it, but I'd be feeling guilty about doing it. <laughs> Why am I it? doing these things? Why am I not going home? I used to be, seriously, Jane, it resonates with me so much because I used to be the girl that would be like, I want to go home at like midnight, but then I'd be like, what if I miss out on something? Yes. What am I miss out on? So I ended up staying out till four, five, six, seven o'clock in the morning. And it's yes. like, you know. Going to the next club and the next yeah. club and the next club. And, and yeah. chasing, just chasing yes. that thing. And, and it's like, it's it, like I look back now. I'm the first one to go home. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, bye. <laughs> a lot of the time, I don't even go out now. I'm like, oh, could we meet in the afternoon? <laughs> and then we're, we're, we're at that age where lunch is the thing now, right? Like, yeah. you, let me do lunch. Do lunch. I don't want to go out. <laughs> I, I love, love a day that. rave. Still, I've got to admit, I love I going. Been. I need. I need desperately. I think you would love it because it's I know I would. Spiritual forty pluses. <laughs> I need to go there, Jane. <laughs> I need to find Definitely. one. Definitely. So, how did you get started in your field? Well, again, this is a very interesting one. So, through my hedonistic lifestyle, I actually worked um, for my sins um, for JP Morgan, BNP Paribas, and UBS Investment Bank on the trading floor so i was like oh, wow, right on the, the belly of the i knew you worked for them i didn't realize it was oh yeah i was right in there and um so i i knew how messed up people were for want of better words you know there were suicides in the environment that i worked in constantly oh, yeah. you know it was it was and it used to hurt my heart so much it hurt my heart so much now in 2013 2014 i physically burnt out like my health just said enough is enough lucy you know my spiritual awakening journey was right we're, when if you if you don't get the memo and wake up we're taking your health from you we're going to strip you bare of everything and that's basically what happened in 2014 i had to quit my job as a director on the trading floor and you know for me these days i say that it actually saved my life now mm. that is how i got into what i do today i burnt out physically mentally emotionally spiritually i was there i was raw and i was a mess for want of better words so i had to quit my job and i went basically i went around the world for 14 months and i was very in a very lucky position jane so many people couldn't do that which is why i share it so openly i don't want people to get to that point you know people need to recognize before they get to that point that they are you know they have the power within them to make the change it's just a decision that they need to make yeah so i made that choice in 2014 i went around the world i me honestly i've got some wild stories we don't have enough time for it today but i have some wild stories literal random connections that i met i met some of the most incredible healers around the world i ended up in the amazon jungle picking plants and things that help heal the body and you name it yeah. like my path was just laid from that moment forwards but like anybody that's on this journey, I was like, okay, how can I normalize what I've learned? So I thought, oh, I know, I'll qualify as a nutritionist. Like, I've, I've hurt my health. Yes. I'm going to help other people. And so I went and did a degree in nutrition at Greenwich University whilst I was still working and whilst I was doing all that good stuff. And I also did a health coaching course because I was very, it's going to be about health. Yes. I, I, although I knew I was intuitive and things like that, like I, I wasn't really getting the memo still at that point. So I went back to work um, for UBS Bank. And whilst I was there, I was building my coaching business. And when I'm talking coaching, it was very much health coach. It was very much nutritionist. It was very much like let's heal the body. And then I remember one day a lady came to me and she had some physical disease in her body. And out of nowhere, 
I just went, oh, this is why you've created that. This is how it's happening. And it's so matter of fact. And I was like, what even is that? Like, how do you know? And I was like, I'm ever so sorry if that's offended you. And she went, how did you know that? Like, it was a real, like, what's going on here? And I scared myself, Jane, in all honesty. But I realized at that point I could channel spirit. And yeah. that actually I could help people get to the root cause of the disease in their body and where it came mm. from and the emotional trauma that surrounds it. But of course, I was a bit scared to do that. So I, I continued with my health coaching and I continued with the nutrition until I got to a point probably about a year down the line where there was no denying that I had very, very, very special gifts. And I was able to help people shift whatever was going on in their life. You know, if they had put on a bit of weight, I could get them to the place where they manifested that. Um, and it was it was a very, very interesting dynamic, Jane, because I went from being this very corporate, very hedonistic um, lady to being this complete woo-woo freak of nature on the trading floor because I was still there at this point. And I, you, you were know, still there? Yeah. And so I only went back yeah. for two years, but I, I'd finished my degree and I'd started, you know, I I played the game when I went back in all honesty. I, I used to do yeah. um, seminars once a month where I'd stand in front of anywhere between two and 500 people and share topics, you know, because I was like, oh, yeah, you know, this would be really good. And, and of course, UBS were like, please do this. Like, you're helping reduce our sick days. Please help us, you know. People are going to get better. So that's what I did. I just started doing it. And, and then I got to a point where I was like, you know what? I know more people around the world need to know about this. And I made a brave move. And I jumped out of corporate in 2017. And I've, and I've never gone back. Mm. And of course, the journey has evolved massively. I don't just work with people's health now. I activate the soul. Um, I take people on, you know, a journey from living in their head, you know, really, really working from their head to go into their heart so they can create the self-love for their spiritual awakening. You know, so it's um, it's it's been one wild rocket that I've been on, in all honesty, Jane. But So I've been doing this full-time since 2017, um, yeah. but kind of like part-time since 2014, so almost 10 years. Yes, fantastic. Funnily enough, I jumped from the NHS back in 2017 as well. Oh, how so it was definitely uh, a jump year and a couple of years or even one year later I um I made it down to Borders. Sorry so, about that background noise. <laughs> somebody somebody just decided to stand right there and shout. <laughs> apologies apologies to your listeners for that. It's not intentional. Yes, what you need to know about Lucy is she does do a lot of travelling a lot of speaking so we're very lucky to have her on the show and um yes she's in a, a, a nice shop right now she's <laughs> on the road so <laughs> i've been doing energy work all weekend i've been speaking i've been doing all sorts of different bits and pieces so I'm like i'm making this work you're getting the real life lucy here with you <laughs> so let's let's dive deep into your business because you do a lot and we don't want to confuse the listeners and listeners I'm going to have all the details of all the connections to Lucy below or above or somewhere right next to this interview um so but but tell us tell us about like what's your business evolved into now okay so um interestingly in 2015 I was sat in my mum's kitchen and I named my business active eight U. So A-C-T-I-V with an eight and then a letter U. Now, I didn't have a clue what I was doing back then. And I didn't realize that I could channel back then either. But this name came out of nowhere. Yeah. And actually, it's the most beautiful, beautiful name that I gave it because that's what I do. I activate you. You know, at its essence, whatever it is that you need, if you need your mind activating, I do that. If you need your heart activating, I do that. If it's your soul that needs activating, if it's your health, like whatever it is, at its essence, I am somebody who is here to remind you of your eternal truth and bring it back online. Mm. Like in, in its simplistic form, that is what I do for a living. Now, um, my business has evolved massively. As you heard, I was very much nutrition and health coaching and Although, you know, I have, um, so I've got a 12-month program called Self Love Club. 
Self Love Club started as cheeky little seminars that I ran around the world where I would help people recognize the love within and bring them back online and give them seven, seven steps to self love. Um, and then what happened over the. I had a seven step to, um, oh, you know, something. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> You, you got to do it. And that's why when you said yeah. this is episode seven, I was like, of course it's seven. What else would it be? <laughs> that's fine. It could only have a, uh, the, the other number it would have been is number two, you know, because I'm two, two and everybody knows me as two, 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 two. So that, that would have been yeah. the only other number. But yeah. So um, yeah, I had a seven steps process and I used to literally go around the world doing self-love club seminars, you know, and it, they were amazing. I had such a good laugh. And then some one day somebody said, like, I need a bigger program on this, Lucy. Like, talk to me about how you've got where you where you've got. I get a lot of people coming to me saying, I wanna I wanna have gifts like you. And I'm really open and honest with people and just say, mm -hmm. every single one of you have my gifts, every single one of you yes. have Jane's gift, every single one of us are exactly the same. It's just how much we surrender to the journey as to what gets activated and what comes online, you know. And I just, uh, everybody listening, please know I'm nothing special. I'm just a conduit this lifetime and I'm here to just hold space for as many people as possible, you know. And, and a true spiritual mentor, coach, whatever you want to call it, will we'll have that conversation with you. Like, you can have anything. You can be psychic. You can talk to spirit. You can see spirit. Like, anything that you are keen to do you have the ability to do it it's just about that surrendering yeah. journey so i literally took on board what this person said to me and i really valued this person and he kept saying to me please lucy please like help me get what you've got and i was like you have it like literally you have it within but then i was like you know what like let's do something about this and so i reviewed my healing journey from the minute that i burnt out and I broke it down into like almost like 12 steps if you like and I started producing content and started putting things together so mm. that I could I could share this journey with just the normal average everyday Joe and then they could go on this this process and they'd you know they'd have weekly calls with me they could work with one of my coaches they could do whatever it like whichever there's many options of the way um, that you can work with this program so I've been running this program now for four years, constantly. I haven't given myself a blooming week off, Jane, so I'm changing that next year. Oh, my gosh. Change <laughs> that. Literally, I'm like, Lucy, walk your talk. Some self-love yes. here, please, young lady. Um, Get so, those yeah. boundaries in place. Absolutely. Well, I'm lucky now. I've got a team of coaches, so I do actually delegate a lot of stuff to them. You know, I'm, I'm very, I'm very yes. lucky. Um, but I am walking my talk. I'm changing the program at the moment so that next year when it starts, I've actually, I would have actually had three months off before we start. Yes. So it's very, very yes. important. Yeah, it's very important to walk your talk. There's a lot of people out there that are not doing that. So you know, mm. and if I'm going to speak out about that, then I want to be making sure I'm walking my talk. You know. Yeah, so definitely. basically, the 12 month program is broken down into different steps. You know, we look at how the ego, like how the ego mind manipulates you. We look at different things like moving the body, uh, fueling the body, like all sorts of, all sorts of different, but, but literally it's how I heal myself. And, mm. you know, when I talk about healing, like I've actually had a really big healing journey, not just the burnout that I experienced, you know, I had tumors in the womb. I had, you know, like uh, chronic digestive issues, underactive thyroid, I was on medication for, like literally there was so much stuff that was going on with my health yeah. that I've been able to heal because of this and journey. And you, you have healed through this journey. Absolutely. Yeah, you've healed. Because so much, or all really, disease is due to the trauma and the lifestyle we lead. Exactly. So we didn't do ourselves any favours back then, and Jane did. No, oh, I, I, I had IBS and all sorts. Of... <laughs> yeah, and IBS is a really interesting one. I find it fascinating because I actually randomly, never randomly, this time last year, I flew to Egypt and I sat next to a gut um, surgeon. So he was a surgeon of the colon basically that's that's basically yes. and I was like I've got a question for you because we were talking about it and he said to me you know he was like oh we, we ended up chatting and he said oh you know what do you do for a living and I said to him well I um help you know one of the things I do is help heal emotional trauma within the body and he went oh explain that to me I'm, I'm interested to hear and I was like well let's look at the gut not knowing he was a, a gut specialist and I'm like well let's look at the gut you know the gut holds on to all of the anger in the body the resentment shame and, and I saw his eyes prick up and I said 
do you mind me asking what you do? And he said, oh, I, I'm a surgeon. And I, and I said, oh, what area do you specialise? He went, the gut. And I thought, oh, my intuition is hilarious. Like, she's so funny. She's just like, I'll just go straight there. So I said, to, like, we were having a good discussion and he was kind of like, you know, obviously talking from a medical perspective about how he wanted certain things to be and how, yeah. you know, although he could see like a little bit of similarity, like maybe not. But then we got onto IBS and he said to me, without any shadow of doubt, you know what, Lucy, you're onto something there. He said, we physically cannot prove it's anything, which is why we just blanket call it that. There's nothing we can do about it. He said, so I am going to take this conversation and start putting it into my practices and see how, if I talk to them about what's irritating them and what might yeah. be causing anger and things in their life, then I am going to see the results. And he actually reached out to me. He's a doctor in Gibraltar. He reached out to me and he said to me, I've got really good results from you. So I just wanted to say thank you. And I'm like, you are so welcome. And this That's is the beautiful so good. way that divine works, right? Because we have to have these conversations. And just imagine we could bring the two worlds together, holistic and yes. medical. You know, because I do, I do think there's a place for medicine. Um, like, I personally, I do anything but that. <laughs> Hi, the cat Pussycat. has come to join, by the way. Hi, Hello, Lucy. Oh, so beautiful. I've come to join. Oh, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. The energy's lovely. <laughs> so yeah i you know i do think that there is this this like merging of the worlds that is is taking place and i love the fact that people are open to this there's so many that have shut it down um so yeah this is basically what i do i help people establish in their with their ego mind where the trauma has come from you know how we how we can look at that how we can raise it up into consciousness so that we can look to heal it we and like i say we look at every area of the body uh, like the mind body and soul in all honesty in that program and what a lot of people say to me is, yeah, but I don't understand why looking at nutrition helps you get spiritually aligned. And I'm like, well, it's it's multifaceted, right? We need to look at yes. every area of our life to recognize how we've held ourselves back in the past and mm -hmm. how we have, you know, how, how we just haven't been able to move forwards because of certain decisions and, like you say, the lifestyles. So, and then everybody gets to the end and of the program. Would you agree that everybody's nutrition is slightly different? I oh, mean, there's things we all need. Yep. But some people are really good on some certain yep. different type of diet totally. than the other, right? Totally agree, yeah. So um, I, I am personally plant-based for a reason. I have a blood type, which is very much supported by that. I've tried everything else, and it just supports me. A lot of my clients go, I know you're not going to like me eating meat. And I'm like, says who? Like, if it works for you, eat it. Like, I'm not going to judge you for it. It's just something that I don't do. And, and this is where we need to be with everybody. This is not about judging. It's not about me being right or you being right. It's about lots of different perspectives. And then whatever works for you, please go and follow that. Yeah. Yes. I I've tried. So cool. I've tried so many things on on the journey, and I'm not on. I'm not on any particular diet right now or way of eating. Just normal, as healthy as I can do it. But I've got to say, the thing that made me feel the best was the ketogenic diet. Wow! But it's yeah. oh, it's just quite hardcore, and I'm not yeah. feeling hardcore right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, one of my very good friends got very sick on the ketogenic diet. Very, very, very sick. Like long over the longer periods of time. Good, yeah. um, but she said that during short periods, she felt amazing. So I think you're probably doing Maybe the right the thing. Short periods. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I did three years, and then I was like. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah, I was amazing. Um, but then uh, I think oh, I can't remember. I just wanted a bit of cake. Yeah, fair play. The, the thing know? is, I I believe balance. You know, we've got to have some balance in our life, Jane. We're also obsessed with being a particular way, and you know, even yeah. with the spiritual journey, people become so obsessed with I need to be more spiritual. I need to be more connected. I need to be this. I mean, you don't need to be anything. You're perfect the way that you are if you want to learn if you want to remember more then please like go go along that journey but don't beat yourself up about it and certainly don't compare to anybody else yeah we on on the journey i think especially at the beginning and when there are different kind of changes or challenges we can all get so rigid and actually i think it slows us all down and yeah, it certainly slows the kind of spiritual um access channeling and everything for me absolutely no you're bang on you're bang on so um yeah 
so the 12 month program sees everybody literally change their whole lives and like I say during during it they're like how does this improve my intuition how does it because I'm not literally teaching them how to do these things yeah yep, yep. they're, really they're, like, they're getting the telepathy they're getting all of this stuff their families are shifting and they're like how does this even work I'm like self-love is the answer to it all it's literally that <laughs> I love it Amazing. As there are lots of holistic wellness businesses um, listening to this show, um, and I do spiritual business mentoring as well and tech support for people, um, what is your best bit of business advice? Oh, love that. I love that question. So for me personally, um, it's walking your talk. You know, yeah. Like I alluded to earlier, there's a lot of people out there saying that they do certain things and they don't. Like, authenticity is the highest vibrational frequency on the planet. But yeah. yet, like, it's okay if you have a, if you like a drink of wine at the weekend, own it. Your people will love you for doing that and they'll probably like doing it too, you know? Like, don't pretend to be this person who sits there with, you know, like a turban on their head or something if that's not you. Like, people say to me, like, how how because i walk around in jeans you know i'm in my bikini like i i don't i don't have that spiritual look you know, i'm just a normal girl that, that yeah. got brought into a normal family and i've just tapped into this wonderful world of the mysticism so my advice is there is eight billion people around the world your people will find you if, as long as you're being authentic and just a little add-on if you don't mind, Jane. So being a chief, a bit chief, I'm giving two. Show up, show up, put yourself out there. Do not be embarrassed. You know, like allow yourself to mess up. Allow yourself, allow people to see you mess up. Like, and if, if you do something that you're like, oh God, I did this and it wasn't really in alignment with, you know, what I actually practice, talk about it. Mm. Because then people can relate to you and they're like, oh, it's okay for me to mess up. Ah, that's that's good. And you know, for me personally, that's that's my biggest advice for anybody. If you want to create anything, you know, and I and I went from zero. I had no help with with any business, and I've got the most incredible business now. Like I am so lucky. I can travel around the world, and I've got a team of eight coaches that do like bit support for you know, like it's amazing. Yeah, amazing. But the whole way through, I've just been real and raw. Yeah, that's beautiful. Beautiful advice. Um, I, I think when I first got introduced to you, somebody sent me one of your uh, YouTube videos or your lives or something like that, and it was back in the lockdowns. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Passionate, then. Passionate, which I loved uh, because there were many people saying stuff but not actually going online and saying, hey, I don't believe this stuff. This is what I believe. Um, that was and me. Yes, that was you. And well done to you. Thank you. And I was sharing, sharing, going, yeah, this is just not right. This doesn't feel good to me. Um, and I think a lot of the time people are worried about losing about sharing those points of views Absolutely. aren't they because yeah. of their business and their business persona and all the rest of it but i really feel to get that authenticity you know we have to stand for what we believe in Absolutely. don't be so rigid you know that you can't accept other people's points of views exactly. but yeah to to be able to like this is this, this is where is i me. stand on the subject this yeah. is me yeah. yeah, and, and in all honesty, Jane, so I don't I don't know how long ago that video was, but you know, I lost thirty six thousand followers on Facebook because I was leading the protests in London. Like let's be real about it. I wasn't just speaking, I was leading those things, you know, because Yeah, I, I was felt, there. I, I was there so passionate. You know, I was so passionate. And I lost a lot of people that like before they took my account, I lost a lot of people because of their views that are now coming back to me going, oh my God, I wish I'd listened to you. Oh my God, I judged you. And I'm like, don't worry about it. I, I, I wouldn't worry. You know, I appreciate you saying it to me, but don't. And when you're real and when you stand in your voice, it doesn't matter what you perceive yourself to lose. What's mm. important is, is that you stand in your truth and you are the bright button. You are the shining light for other people to be able to navigate towards you or be able to, you know, don't ever feel anything that you lose was not intended for you. 
And yeah. sometimes we've got to lose a little bit so that we can welcome in what is actually intended for us. And this is where a lot of people, like, they cling on to the past and then they get burned. Let go. Yeah. Let the universe have your back. And as spiritual, you know, mentors, as spiritual teachers, as spiritual practitioners, we have to be the lead in this. Sometimes we have to release things that we think are going to be with us forever so that we can actually get what we truly deserve. Mm -hmm. 100%. Yes. If, if I was to find you online now, how would we start working together? What would that look like? What would my options be? Well, there's many options with me, <laughs> which is why I was like, we are so going to confuse this. <laughs> yeah, basically. So um, basically, I have a, a series of different programs from like five days all the way through to whatever, uh, like the 12 month program. On top of that, I do a lot of energy work around the world. So I callings and I you know go on these what I call missions to realign energies I've got books you name it I have got it all out there I have a podcast a bit like you you do um, Jane I have all sorts of different things so it's really horses for courses yeah you know, like not everybody is the same person not everybody needs the same thing and it's exactly the same from a business perspective you know from a business coach you don't need the same as what you need from somebody in marketing you know yeah. and this is why it's very important that you understand and and really really get clear on what it is that you want if you do not want, know what you want then how are you going to be able to find it you know and I, and I say the same to any of my clients that's like I'm, I really would love to manifest my ideal partner I'm like okay so what does that look like oh well tall dark hats no, no 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 what does it look like and this is what we need to get with with the spiritual journey like what is it you're mm. looking for do you want to get connected to spirit? Do you want to love yourself more? How, like, how does that look? Because it's only at that moment of clarity that you know what you can search for. And then, you know, like there are many, there's there's many different people out there like myself that has, that offers a whole different array of things, you know, from individual programs for you. Um, but I also run this thing called Conscious Conversations every Monday evening. And literally, people come along and they get their absolute socks blown off just by, like, we look at current day events, we look at, you know, consciousness, we look at all sorts of different things. But, you know, we're, at the moment, we're looking quite a lot at, like, um, history, the, the past and things that I've been channeling where things perhaps aren't quite as they seem. And honestly, people come along and a couple of people last night was like, how on earth? does this ever happen like how do you get this information because it it's it's so like real inside yes. you know um so there's there's many many different ways um jane like i say it's it's just a bit overwhelming for people really i would just look at my website and take a look there <laughs> and also you can uh, reach out to my head coach for a free, free 15 minute call so that you know like if you know what you what you want and she can obviously help you um, identify yeah. that and, and figure that out that's fantastic thank you so do you have any uh, any other top tips or anything for our audience that they can implement immediately that's free that's available to everybody yeah absolutely so first and foremost i i would ask every single one of you listening um to answer this question first and foremost so the question that i ask myself at the start of my journey is who are you, Lucy Davis? Because a lot of people can list out everything that they're not. But it's very rare that people can list out everything that they are or everything that they want to be. So that's where I would start with that. And I have a whole heap of um, free ebooks on my website from, you know, your best partner to, uh, I've got a really cheeky book called Dealing with Dickheads. <laughs> Because sometimes we have those people in our lives. So what I would do is I would recommend everybody go over to my website, help yourself to as many free eBooks as you want. Like there is some absolute gold in there and it will really help you shift your, I know that book sounds quite rude, but actually it's very much about consciousness. It's very much about stepping into your own power. Um, yeah. But it's just a cheeky title because I'm a little bit cheeky like that. But ask yourself the question, who am I? And then your name. Literally write that down on a piece of paper, grab a journal. I'm a massive fan of journaling. I'm a massive, massive encourager of using a pen and paper to get everything out of you out of yeah. yourselves so um that's that's what i would invite everybody to do fantastic and the website is lucydavis.com 
com, and you've got everything there it's a really um, uh, what can i say thorough <laughs> website <laughs> it's definitely all there jane <laughs> it's all there so look above look below i'm gonna have all of lucy's deets there she is definitely the energizer bunny in the spiritual world it's my job i'm the activator <laughs> yes she is the activator um, and I very much look forward to seeing you in person, whether it's at one of your events um, in the UK or in Bournemouth. Absolutely. I look forward to it, Jane. It's been lovely to speak with you. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Thanks for having me. Stay Sane with Jane. Season 2, Local Legends. The show that helps you to thrive, not just survive. Every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Tune in each week as Jane connects with local legends of Dorset, bringing you the most up-to-date health and wellness guidance, therapies, courses, retreats and stories happening locally. Each session includes a guided meditation hosted by Jane or one of her special guests. Here's your host, Jane Scanlon. Hello, you gorgeous souls. That was an amazing interview with Lucy and we're going to be heading into the mindful maintenance section. Mindful, <laughs> I'm getting so confused. I am sorry. We're going into the meditation sessions, a cross between meditation and mindfulness. So we're stepping down a gear tuning in to our souls and today we are going to dive deep into some compassion some love um, and forgiveness invite you to take a deep breath, get yourself comfy, as we shift gears, today we're going to be tuning into compassion for infinite thought. Before we start this guided mindful meditation, I invite you to tune into your body and how you feel within the belly, chest and head. Are there any emotions? popping up right now. Any positive or negative impact stories that you believe regarding compassion? And just remember that there are many others who are feeling similarly about this topic as you. Yet with increased awareness and mindfulness, you can apply these techniques in your everyday life. So now you've found a comfortable place Take a moment in your seat to connect to the ground through the soles of your feet or your sit bones or whatever is touching down. Notice the connection 
to the ground. And then with a long, slow breath through the nose, lengthen the spine. Equally breathe out, grounding again. As you sit here, watching breath, intentionally draw a slight smile to the lips and allow the body to bask in a sensation of happiness. Feel into that sensation as if you already have happiness in this world. And every cause of future happiness right here, right now. Content. Knowing that you have everything you need. And then with the sensation, the felt sensation of how this happiness feels in your body. Imagine sending that same sensation to either one single particular being or all living beings in the world. And then imagine this one particular being or everyone feeling that same full bodied happiness and contentment that you feel right now. From the sensation of happiness, allow yourself to feel as though you are also free from every pain and suffering. And all causes of future pain and suffering Still breathing into that slight seen or unseen smile. You are completely free from pain and suffering. With your whole body Drop into the sensation of how good this freedom feels. As you wish the same for just one particular being or all beings everywhere.
May all beings everywhere be free from pain and suffering. And all causes of future pain and suffering. As you send out this wish, feel the energy of that wish fulfilled coming back to you as your happiness and your sending of happiness to others causes the happiness of others to return back to you. Seeing all other beings happy and free from pain, thanks to your wish, brings you joy. Locate this joy in your body and rest in awareness of this joy. I'm feeling completely full of joy send it to others. May all beings everywhere feel this same complete and full sense of joy. May they feel the joy of a full body connection to happiness fully absent of any pain or suffering. And allow yourself to imagine a world where every being was connected to joy. And because of this connection, not a single person would ever hurt another. And the recognition um, that this world began with you. With your willingness to connect to the joy within you. and to share it with others. And so may you always be willing to share joy. And may you share it freely with all beings equally, whomever they are, Imagining for a moment what it would be like to live in a world where everyone freely and equally shared joy. Let's intentionally send out that wish. May they feel the joy of a full body connection to happiness, absent of any pain or suffering. And allow yourself to imagine a world where every being was connected to joy. 
And because of this connection, not a single being would ever hurt another. And recognise that this world began with us today. With your willingness to connect to the joy within you and to share it with others. And so may you always be willing to share joy. And may you share it freely with all beings equally, whomever they are, imagining for a moment what it would be like to live in a world where everyone freely and equally shared joy. Let's intentionally send out that wish out to the world out to every single being out there. Kushniki rakama tor kua chiamakar kienakwa tiwata chiabata chiamakur kuma. I invite you to place your hands around your body in a hug and to envisage and place that smile and that joy on your face within your body, exuding it out and people will know you are joyful and you are content. Give yourself a little squeeze, maybe wriggle your fingers or your toes, shift your sit bones, coming back, coming back into the space where that has held you in meditation. Taking a deep breath, and when you're ready, opening your eyes and coming back into the room, into the physicality. And throughout that guided meditation, you may have heard some purring as my cat came and sat and purred and enjoyed the meditation. My name's Jane Scanlon. Thank you for joining me for this mindful meditation. We also host an amazing monthly subscription called the co moon This subscription um, box has wonderful goodies in it, all focused around the new and full moon. So there are crystal beads, cards, intention cards, teas or cacao, incense, Santo Paulos, there's lots of different things every single month. All the details are below and you can connect with me, Jane Scanlon, to find out more.